I want to show you how you can create a Copilot agent that's specifically designed to handle employee training within Microsoft Copilot Studio right now. So a super common use case that I think is actually fairly simple and straightforward to understand and set up is building a generative AI agent that can be used to assist in helping ramp up either new or existing employees into your organization or, you know, what we would call employee training. And fortunately, the legwork of building out the employee training documents and content and policies and practices that employees should follow is probably already built out for you or your organization. And now it's just a matter of getting Copilot to use those to build what we would call its knowledge base so that people can interact with Copilot and interact with the content of these employee training documents effortlessly. And so I want to show you here I am within Microsoft Copilot Studio and here I have previously set up a coffee co-pilot and let's say that I am the owner of a coffee shop and I want to utilize this co-pilot or I partially want to utilize this co-pilot to help ramp up new coffee, the co-pilot cafe employees or baristas. Now, I have actually gone ahead just for some context, created a little employee handbook here. Welcome to the co-pilot cafe. Um, with a table of contents and kind of all the all the different content that employees should be well versed in and need to know when they start, you know, working at the Copilot Cafe. Now, I have already gone ahead. You'll see here underneath this knowledge tab here, you can create knowledge sources and create what we would call maybe a knowledge base for your Copilot to use. And I have already attached this employee training handbook PDF to my co-pilot. Now, I wanna take a moment here. Something that I think is super important is, obviously, I'm sure your company has a bigger employee handbook than a seven-page PDF. It likely has, you know, a full SharePoint series of, series of SharePoint folders um, or a long 200-page PDF document that covers everything that employees need to at least know and go through, maybe training videos, training certifications, you know, whatever. All of those things you can add to your knowledge base. And I specifically ref like think about a SharePoint site or a series of SharePoint folders. Now, maybe more of just kind of like a talking point here. Like, you can add those things to your knowledge base. We're not covering how to do that in this video, but there are plenty of videos online and out there on how to do that. But nonetheless, you are going to need to get your knowledge base set up and so that Copilot can reference all the information within that. And I just wanna give you two little nuggets. One is making sure that there's definitely a balance between how, like basically of how big this dance of how big these individual knowledge sources should be. So for example, say you are, you know, a manufacturing company and you have a folder for all the products that your company offers and say we're ramping up salespeople. And so they need to know about all the laws and regulations. They need to know about all the products that you offer. They need to know about kind of the company brand and how they should handle interacting with customers and different things. They should know, you know, the expectations of their job. They should know the expectation of how to grow their career and succeed and get a promotion. They, you know, say there's, say there's all these different things that they should know. It would probably be advisable to break those different things out into different actual different knowledge sources in here. And I don't know if you if the best way to do that would be using, you know, SharePoint folders or whatever and attaching those those folders in here or having those individual documents in here. The reason for that is is because Copilot and Generative AI is really powerful, but the more information you give it at one single time, the longer it's gonna take to generate an answer. So for example, if I just have a question about a really specific product, we probably don't want the large language model to search through all that information that I, I guess I just mentioned. We want it to just you know look at products. And so 
how can we kind of get around that? And so kind of just thinking about generally, I don't know, could we call it co-pilot theology um, of how we want to think that? You can create topics for those different purposes. And let's say that the only purpose that this co-pilot agent serves is for employee training. But nonetheless, you may still want to create different topics for those different parts of employee training. Now, in this video, I'm just going to create one because we have very simple employee training. I'm going to go ahead and select select create a new topic and from blank. And I will come back to the trigger here in a second. But let me go ahead and just call this employee. <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and select add node and underneath advanced, you will see generative answers. Now, Underneath the generative answers, again, I'm going to come back to these parts in a second, but you can actually select the specific knowledge sources that you want it to reference. So say that you have broken out these parts of employee training into separate topics, into separate knowledge sources. You can then select which specific knowledge source each topic can use. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that again for this scenario. And now I'm going to, I guess, start back from the beginning. I wanted to close that loop on, on setting up your knowledge source, but okay, let's set up our topic. The topic trigger is what tells copilot, Hey, at this point in time, when the, when the person interacting with copilot sends a message that contains something like this or, you know, whatever, this is what tells copilot when to use this topic. Um, and that's because we have this triggered by agent or triggered by copilot or triggered by generative AI trigger. Um, there are a bunch of other different triggers in here you can use not going through all of these. Let's go ahead and lean on generative AI to do this. And let's just say that this topic is used for employee training purposes and um, contains all of the policies and practices employees are expected to follow. Right. This is just kind of explaining what this topic is for. So then that way copilot knows, Hey, when someone asks a question related to this, you know, this is when that happens. Going back to that first example, say, you know, you again, back in that manufacturing company, you likely will want to have a products topic and maybe a laws and regulations topic and a company policies and how you should conduct yourselves topic. The, those are going to be the different things that you want to break out and describe what in each individual topic does. So say it was the products topic. It could be this topic is used to answer questions about products that our company offers for employees to be caught up and well versed in the product details as they are selling to customers or something like that, right? Something along those lines. And so then that way copilot knows when someone asks a question about products, it needs to use the products topic. I hope, I hope that makes sense, but nonetheless, Continuing on, you'll notice here that, that this we have this inputs property or this input input. Um, and what this means is this is saying, hey, I want you to go work your generative AI magic with whatever is put in here. At this point, it's it's kind of like it's getting nothing. And then it's saying, hey, go use generative AI, but it's not getting anything to use generative AI on. Now, what we need it to use is going to be the you know, message that the person last sent. So for example, if I say, Hey, um, what are, what's the closing routine for closing up the cafe, you know, or, um, what are some expectations of my job? What, what's the highest priority thing I should focus on learning next as a new employee? Maybe these are questions that I could send copilot. We want to take that message that was sent and then allow copilot to work its gen AI magic on that message. And so the input that we're looking for here is the last message sent. And you can actually do that by clicking on this variables and going over to system variables. System variables are just the variables that are kind of out of the box that exist for every copilot. And we are going to look for the activity dot text variable. And when I click that, now it's going to be in here and it's going to say, Hey, go work your magic on that activity dot text variable. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Now that I have my topic set up, let me go ahead and hit save while this is saving. I just want to know if you feel like that this video does not answer your question enough or that you have specific nuances to your scenario or that you have tried this and it seems to not be working. 
If you want to get in direct contact with me, you can follow the first link down in the description down below and send me an email. And then that way, I am really passionate about learning and helping other people learn more about Microsoft Copilot Studio. I would love to hop on a one on one coaching call with you to help you in your scenario as well. And you can again do that using the first link to get in direct contact with my email in the description. Okay. My topic is done saving. Let me go ahead and refresh this. And now let me say, what are some expectations? I'm gonna ask Copilot, what are some expectations of my job as a new employee? And here we can see that the employee training topic has been triggered. If I go ahead and click on this message that it sent, it's gonna take us to this new employee topic. We can see that it is generating this answer from this generative answers node, right? From our employee training PDF. And so as a new employee at Coffee Copilot seems to be utilizing this name as opposed to the Copilot Cafe. I mean, come on Copilot, what are we doing here? No, I'm just kidding. Um, but it is it is producing, you know, an answer based off of that. And so I understand that after watching this video, this did not just set up your company's entire employee training co-pilot. But I want to give you the principles, you know, the big key things that you can now take and apply to building your co-pilot. So again, understanding what are the ways to break out the co-pilot into maybe more bite-sized digestible chunks. If you have, you know, 40 different employee training guides that are 40 pages each for all of the different things, you should absolutely find just intuitive ways to break that out into more bite-sized chunks into different topics for your employee training co-pilot. I now want to say if you are wanting to know how to build kind of an FAQ co-pilot or a frequently asked questions co-pilot, you're going to want to check out this video here as I walk through a step-by-step -step guide on how you can set that up for your company or for your business. I'm excited to connect with you in the next one.